So guess what came in the mail? Yeah, not this. This isn't what's important. The Garage Series 5. So this thing must have taken a rocket ship to get here because it is only 10.30 a.m. Uh, on the 11th. And I think it was shipped out yesterday. So pretty impressive that it came all the way from Portland at that speed. But here we are. I did order it expedited shipping. So that's worth mentioning. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. All right. All of this is great and all. Let's put that away. And then we have the tool itself. 40th anniversary edition. It comes with a made in US leather sheath. Pretty cool. Similar to the uh, Series 1 that I got as well. Put that aside. And here is the tool. Bronze anodization on a couple of parts and sort of a creamy white on the other items. Kind of an interesting combination, I have to say. So, the first thing that is clearly apparent is this bronze anodized blade. And this is in CPM MagnaCut. Holy crap. Did they... No, oh, is that just something on the... Oh, that's just... Okay, alright, alright, alright. All right. I thought they had damaged the blade. Okay, no, no, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, so actually not a bad grind job on this one. So, not bad. I've seen a lot worse from Leatherman. This is actually on the really good side of things. So, well done. USA marked right there. USA is going to be marked in a couple different places on this tool. Let's go ahead and open up the smaller implements. So we have a new flathead combination tool. I am a huge fan. The, the flathead that is part of the free series, which I have over here, it is definitely one of my favorite things that they have. I really need to lubricate this. It's getting a little sticky. All right, so... Basically, what they've done is they've actually combined this with a can opener. I don't think it's going to affect the strength all that much, although I think they might have cut it in a little bit more than it was necessary. But, you know, there we are. It also seems sharp enough that you could definitely use it for striking a ferro rod right there as well. So that's, that's actually something that's worth noting. Flathead, package opener, and um, bottle opener. So the Reamer All it makes a comeback. A lot of people don't like this thing. But I have to freely admit here that um, I use this small flathead more than I use the reamer all, like, by a lot. And I would never use it for sewing, but I have used it for drilling holes. It's not as good as the one on the, on the Surge, but it is not bad either. So, it's better to have it than to not. The can opener, you know, it does feel like they took a step backwards going with this style of can opener. The combination tool that was on the original PST, it just, it could do a lot more and it doubled as a package opener as well. So that was kind of a cool thing. And if you sharpened it, you could use it as sort of like a draw knife. So there's that. Now on the other side we have, oh sorry, I almost forgot something. So we have a saw here. And on this side we have the scissor. This is the same style of scissor that we've seen on all the free series tools. All the free series tools. There is a diamond file this time around. Thank goodness. So much better than that dinky little file they have in the free series, a P4 and a P2. Diamond on one side, cross cut on the other, and then you have the cutting edge as well. That one I like. That's a good, that's a good touch. And it looks like because it's flat, it's completely flat, that cutout will not be as big of an issue as I thought it would be. Now here is two implements. One we've seen in the original garage number one with the Mr. Crunch, but we finally have a bit driver, something that people have been asking for for a while. And uh, yeah, pretty good. Let's see. A little bit more play than I think is in the one for the wave. It definitely feels like it's got more play. We'll talk a little bit about that and its comparison to the wave in a minute. Now, when I open this, I actually have to put some effort into it versus like the free series, P4 and P2. If I, if I flick this open, 
it's ballast songs basically. And it's actually one of the coolest things about this tool is you can open and close pretty much everything one handed. I really do like that about this tool. It's been a tool I've carried a lot more lately and I, yeah, I'm gonna have to redo this review. But in here you have to kind of finagle it similar to the way you have to do it with um, many other tools out there. Whether it's the surge, wave, or otherwise, it's probably easier than those, but you're going to have to use a little dexterity to get it open one-handed. And once you do, you'll notice that there is actually a screw for the pivot, as well as spring-loaded pliers. I actually tend to think that this works very well with the concept of the Free Series being, you know, ease of use. Spring-loaded pliers are very convenient when you're doing smaller tasks. It, you know, you don't have to like reach around it and control it. You simply can keep your fingers in a controlled position and just work with them in a bunch of different ways, right? So I do like that quite a bit. That is something that I hope they introduce in the ARC series of tools that comes out later this year. All right, what else is there to talk about? This tool has already been shown by a number of other content creators because different countries have given out gray versions to um, certain individuals that have a long-standing history with Leatherman. So I think that's pretty cool. The only other thing that uh, I can think of to talk about is that they have added some chamfer for some re interesting reason. I'm not sure what that's all about. And they've also formally called this a hammer. Now this is the exact same component that's on the P4, but I don't remember them calling this a hammer. So I think they've decided that it will take the abuse. So that's cool. I wonder if that means this will be covered if I use it kind of like a uh, signal or whatever. Okay, from here, a couple other things. I have some 3D printed sheets that I was hoping would work with this tool. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it to work. Would it work that way? I don't think it will. So if you use the free P4, this is designed by Zap Wizard. It, it slots in perfectly. There's just a little bit more dimension to it. Yeah, how much more? Eh, some. Enough that the tolerances are just off enough for it not to slip into this 3D printed uh, sheath from Zap Wizard. But what I will do with him is I will try to get a hold of him and see if I can give him any me measurements he needs to create a new iteration of this sheath that will work with the upcoming Leatherman Arc and the Garage Series 5. This guy is an absolute just master of 3D design. You've got to see some of his work. Um, if I, if I can remember, I'll make sure to put a link to his website down in the uh, description and the pinned comment. Okay, so I also purchased the site tool, which in my opinion is the best of the extenders currently because it uses a magnet instead of the, um, the collar. So I think this would have, this would have been my pick for matching up with the um, ARC or Garage Series tools, like I would have put it right there and called it a day. This also stores a series of bits in the back as well. So really, really cool design. Now, I also mentioned in a series of videos that you wanna probably add a spare set of bits. When you get any tool that uses a bit driver nowadays, you're not gonna find these in any big box store and if you buy them separately on Leatherman's website, you're going to spend an additional seven on shipping, more than what this actually costs. So make sure whatever you get that has a bit kit enabled with it, whether it's the Curl Wave or the Garage Series 5, make sure you get a couple spares. All right. So that's that. Now, the good news is that the Leatherman Arc should come with an entire, what's going on here, an entire bit kit, which we have knowledge of through the spoilers that came through reddit and multitool.org and many others which kind of leads me to the last point and i will leave you guys from there 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this experience of Garage, how it was purchasing it, because it's just going to get me heated. Uh, it also will muddy this video. It's not necessary. If I end up doing something where I talk about how the Garage has impacted Leatherman and my experience, I will post a link to that video down in the description. I'm not going to make it a public video. The only thing I'm going to say for this is I have recommended over more than a year that Leatherman not use silence as a tool for marketing and that it can backfire dramatically. And this is a great example. Were it not for a group of people finding this information and sharing it about the Leatherman Ark, we would be thinking right this moment that these 1983 units of Garage Series 5 are the only tools that have this tool set, right? And this might be the only ones that exist that have it. We wouldn't realize that, hey, guess what? I'm going to get a chance later in the year to get exactly the same thing, right? So I'm not a collector. I don't really care anyway. Imagine if you didn't know that. Imagine if you all you had was that small one second, half a second image from the 40th anniversary thing, and you didn't have any idea what the tool set was going to be. That would probably make even more people upset than currently are. Just something I wanted to point out. So I'm curious to see what everyone else's experience was with the Garage Series 5. If you tried for it, do you care? Uh, do you even care about the Leatherman Arc? What do you think about Leatherman and where it's going? I am very curious to see what the perception of others is. I know what mine is, but I'm always interested to see other viewpoints. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this tool, the Arc, Leatherman, whatever you want to talk about. And we will have a discussion there. As always, thank you guys very much for your time. And we'll talk again soon.